Hello everybody, Jennifer here. I'm the founder of Dental Ops Pro and in this video what I'm going to show you is more on the treatment plan side. I know I've had a few questions in regards to that and don't you worry, I also have the video coming on how to take an x-ray with Dentrix Ascent. But once again, in this video what I'm going to go through is how to treatment plan in Dentrix Ascent. So thank you for clicking. So as you can see here, I have just logged into Dentrix Ascend and it takes me to the overview page. I'm going to select my patient, which I've already done. I'm going to click on this arrow right here. And from here, I am going to go into chart. Now in chart, I just want to see exactly what has already been put in. When it comes to using the chart for my treatment planner, it is pretty simple. Um, and I think it's even easier than using Dentrix for those who are used to Dentrix. I'm currently in an office that's using that software. And while I find it to be one of the better ones to get to know, only because it is so common. I, I run into, I think I currently, I have a Sunday job where they use Dentrix and then the job I currently have uses Dentrix. Uh, I am leaving my current job and then I'm going into an, actually an all surgeon office and there they use a dental software specific to oral surgery. So hopefully with the permission of my new employers, I'll be able to integrate that and maybe introduce that to all of my subscribers out there. So once again, I've selected my patient gone into chart and now I'm just going to start entering procedures. So let's say on tooth number eight, I want to add a treatment. So let's say I want to add a crown in here. Not only can you can just type up the code or you can just type up in the description and then you can search from there. So here I've typed in crown and I can go through until I find my full porcelain, which is right there. Or I can just, if you know your codes, which I do, you can just quickly type in the code and then you can select it from there. Depending on the organization, you can also create bundle codes. So that is specific procedures where it's a blast code. So if they're already grouped up together. So if I were to have selected this, when I go under my treatment planner, now, because I already have cases in here, my treatment actually went into a case already. So it's already been in case three and it's already been grouped into the steps. So it was already split with the photo, crown, and buildup being in visit one. And in visit two, an office visit and a crown has already been into visit two. And once again, that's because this is already in a grouped or a bundled code, however you wanna describe it. So if I had not selected the BLAST code or if your office does not have BLAST codes and you were to have entered them separately, so oops, 2740, that procedure, then the 2950, and then let's also say that delivery code. Now when I go under the treatment plan, they're under unassigned. So I would select all of them, or you could only select a few. Move to, and you can move into a specific case already created, or you can move them into a new case, and then I'll do that. Now this little pencil here, it's for me to rename my case so I can name it crown number seven and this helps you easily organize. Now, of course, all of these codes are not going to be done on the first visit. So I would take this last code, the delivery, which will happen weeks later. And you can either move to new visit and it would put it in its own visit. Or more commonly, what I do is I just drag it to this bar right here with the arrow, and then it will move it down for me. Now, what I also appreciate when it comes to treatment planning is that you can easily drag your codes up you and down. No, you didn't. So now I have visit three attached, and I can drag it up or I can take that and I can drag it below. And I'm gonna put that right there. 
or actually we could just leave it right here and then when you preview we'll show you the pricing and as a patient here in this code i do have a discount plan so that's where that pricing is coming from and what i appreciate is tell entrix to send up here tells you when i actually created the procedures and the treatment plan and when they were presented and you can change the status right here so if i didn't present it to stay yet i can still leave it on you and then it even even if the patient has accepted or rejected so this is helpful because you're not always showing the patient the same treatment plan and it actually lets you know the status of what's going on with the patient so normally in my office what we would do is we would print it out the patient rejected it enter it as rejected and then on the printed copy we would write exactly what it is that the patient says said about the treatment or we could write a note on here and then you have the option to show that also another feature that i appreciate is because a lot of these insurances they do renew at different points of the year whether that is going to be no it's okay i'm trying to be a famous youtuber thank you I have a hundred views on my first video. I know I hate showing off. Thank you. Have a good night guys. What I appreciate is the expiration here. And if the patient has a PPO policy and the benefits actually or at the end of the year, you can enter that into the form. And I always like to show that to, to the patients. So you can have the end of the year, which is when most policies do expire or renew or a specific date. So that's always great to show the patient. And then once again, for the note, you can write anything in here to remind the patients of any important points. And that's how we treatment plan. Now, something to always remember is if you are going to do a treatment plan for the patient, if possible, have your assistant if possible have your assistant ch properly chart the patient because if you need to do a bridge between three and five and four needs to be missing you would select your tooth that condition and i um, would find tooth absent here and that is different from actually having the tooth extracted because go back john so it is important that you actually create the correct status treatment plan obviously is work that the doctor is recommending that needs to be done in the office completed is actually work that was done in the office so this is work that's actually done and completed existing so that's work that the patient has come in with or that has not been done in your office and the distinction between these is very important because completed will add the total or that bill to the patient's ledger while treatment plan will not and will have it ready to be presented with pricing and procedures while existing won't do any one of those so with existing it will merely have treatment done but neither billed nor ready to be presented for fees. So I hope that part makes sense. Now, I know somebody had asked me, did I enjoy working with Ascend? And the answer is absolutely. I feel like it had, once you stop being so overwhelmed with all of the options and all of the different ways you can do everything, and you really start working with it on every day. I said this in my last video that I have done three different transitions in three different offices from one program into another. And I say the sweet spot is that three month mark. So you'll start acclimating and getting used to the software. And there's going to be a point where you're going to forget about the old software and how to use it. <laughs> Believe me, I've been there. So and then that's how we treatment plan. Don't forget to always print out your treatment plan.
and have that scanned in. Why do I say that's important? Is because this can be deleted. This can be changed and it's going to be pretty hard to go back and find out exactly what it was that was presented to the patient and what fees the patient was presented or if they say they told me 500 and on right now when you select preview and it says seven then you're going to be able to look back at that printed and scanned in copy and see where that 500 came from. Also, please, I also recommend having the presenter listed on there and named so that way we can go back. But that also helps keep everything fluent and on the same page. Nothing will upset a patient more than them feeling as if they were ripped off and you want to keep pricing clear and cut and all on the same page and that's also part of the reason why once I do present and if I am to schedule a patient's appointment I do like to write pricing on the appointment so that way there's no confusion when the patient walks in and they're expecting to pay that amount ideally you would get your patient to pay for everything in full what I'm doing now is I'm scheduling for that appointment. So once I go into the appointment, you can click to add a treatment planner. And then from here, it'll let you select what it is that you want to add. And where it says other, that's what I say that I add pricing on there. And then if I have any notes regarding that pricing, then I'll write that here. Once again, I, I when it comes to writing notes on anything that I do or when I speak to a patient, I like to pretend that what if I won the lotto and I am not coming back to work and I still want everybody to be on the same page or what if I'm not around to properly explain everything, then I don't want them to think that I made a mistake or I want to explain my actions. So always when you leave notes, bear that in mind. Just find a place to write it and so that way somebody else can easily go back on your work and see how you came up with what and why. This is especially true if a doctor tells you to quote or to charge a patient a specific amount, write it on the treatment plan, write it under patient notes, write it in the appointments, scan it in. I, When something like that happens, I write it in so many places and not only the appointment because the appointment can be deleted and then that's it the note is gone and i came up with this habit of always writing down my notes because i notoriously have a really bad memory and i i won't remember two or three days uh, especially when you're helping so many patients for me at least it's pretty hard to keep track of who's being charged what and why so i always write notes. I always leave it in the patient's chart. I try to tell as many people on that day what I'm doing and why. And so that's how a treatment plan in Ascend. And if you guys have any other questions, please don't be shy and keep the questions coming. Once again, I will have that video up hopefully by next week in regards to how to take x-rays. Oh, I apologize. Another thing I wanted to explain is the color, the color of the work is the color of the status. So the crown is red because I had that treatment plan. And as you can see here, treatment plan screen is red. Any work that would be completed, it won't appear purple. It would appear done. Let me see if I could do a fill in here. I'm sorry, it appears dark blue. And any work existing would appear this baby blue. There you are. So once again, treatment plan, existing, completed. So if we were to have completed this crown, I'm getting nervous about doing all this, but I'm gonna do it for you. So I can change the status here, completed. It. It's gonna change it this dark blue. So once again, if you guys have any additional questions, please keep them coming. I'm getting very excited on building this community. And what I'm doing right now is I'm deleting everything because I don't want to mess up <laughs> our ledger or our final numbers at the end. So, yes. Thank you so much for asking the questions. I always appreciate anything. And 
So in the description of this video, what I'm going to do, so in the description of this video, I am going to attach my dental software comparison packet and it's free to anybody that's just willing. I think it just asks for your email address. So if you type that in there, then your packet, dental software packet would be sent to you. And in there, it gives you the pricing for the dental softwares, my thoughts on them, and I hope it will be very helpful for anybody out there who's looking for it any sort of material such as that. So the last thing I do want to show you guys is how to create a predetermination if the patient so does asks. So in treatment plan, what we're going to do is select what it is that we want on the treatment, or you can select the whole visit. So here I'm selecting the whole visit, or you can select an individual procedure, create, since I don't have insurance coverage, it says no insurance coverage, but if I did, then the insurance will be named here. I would select that and then it would be here under predetermination and then we could send it. So once again, you guys, I want to thank you so much for all your time and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.